If you found this video because you and your buddy were having the argument about whether cement is concrete and concrete is cement and whether those two terms can be used interchangeably, well, you are a loser and nobody cares. At least that's what Kristen Kelly told me at our junior prom when I said technically the floor wasn't cement, it was concrete. You could see the aggregate in the polished floor. And although you could have cement as just cement, you cannot have concrete without cement because cement is a component of concrete, which is cement and gravel and sand and water all mixed together. She said she didn't care, went and got into George's car and drove away and we never spoke again. But if you care, join me today on Smith House. Howdy y'all, it's Jordan Smith. We have been building concrete structures for thousands of years. The Greeks and the Romans had it figured out. Even today, the largest unreinforced concrete structure in the world was built by the Romans. It's a Pantheon in Rome, one of my favorite buildings. And it's crazy to have this building that they made with a material that then for the next several hundred or thousand years, people really didn't know how it was built, at least not the majority of people. Concrete sort of went dormant in the Middle Ages, and then in the 1600s, 1700s, it started making a resurgence. The 1800s and the Industrial Revolution really brought it on strong, and today it is the most used building material in the world. We use it all around the world in every different climate and it's an incredible building material that has a lot of advantages and a few disadvantages. Let's get right into what makes concrete. Cement is one of the components in this mixture that makes concrete so we'll start there and then we'll work our way over to concrete. At its most basic level cement is just a mixture of limestone and clay or shell crushed and mixed together and then put in a rotating kiln that heats the stone mixture to a very, very hot temperature like 1550 degrees Celsius. And then out the other end, it, as it's undergone this chemical change, it comes out as clinker, which is just these globules of gray matter that we crush up and that is Portland cement. Now, when we mix that cement with water, it undergoes something called hydration. So let's look at a really simple schematic that I think will help people understand how the hydration process works. These yellow particles here are our cement particles. Now, this is not the aggregate. These are not the stones. We're zoomed way, way in here. If we were to zoom out, you would have billions of these little particles for one itty bitty piece of gravel. So these are tiny little things. We're very zoomed in on my third grade drawing here. We add water and now the water surrounds those particles. And as the tricalcium silicate starts to react, you start having this cement paste of calcium silica hydrate grow out of our dry particles and the particles themselves start getting consumed. The dry particles start getting consumed. It's sort of like when you're making pancake batter. You know, you mix it up and most of the powder gets combined with the eggs and the milk, but some of the powder, some of the flour doesn't. Um, that is what is happening here. And over time, the particles are hydrated. The water's actually infusing through the gel into the dry powder and this hydration process will take days if not in some cases years to to happen so even though concrete feels like it gets hard in you know two hours and it's setting up pretty hard and maybe after four hours or eight hours you're walking across it it's still not nearly as hard as it will be in 28 days that is where we sort of set our our time frame on this is how hard the concrete's going to be. It sort of sets the sets the benchmark, but it's not how hard the concrete will eventually get. This concrete will continue to cure, continue to get hard over a much longer period of that than that as the water reacts with the cement. Now, that's just cement. Let's talk about concrete. Concrete is just cement and sand and gravel. You make a mixture of those in like a one, two, three ratio, one part cement, 
two parts sand, three parts gravel. Maybe you do a one, four, four. It all depends on what the final compressive strength of the concrete should be. If you're going for a 4,000 PSI versus a 3,000 PSI, you're going to start boosting that larger aggregate. Now, the reason that we don't just throw a ton of large aggregate in there is because it makes it very hard to work with. Like the more that we add, the harder it gets. So you might think, well, we'll just add instead of four, why not five or six parts into this mixture? Well, it gets very hard to work with. And while we're talking about things that are really hard to work with, the hydration process that I talked about in the cement section of this takes very little water. It doesn't take very much water at all for the hydration process to work. But what does take a lot of water is our ability to have this concrete workable, our ability to pump it through pump trucks to push it out and spread it out and for it to fill the forms and voids of our foundations or of our walls. We need more water to make it workable. And the ratio is somewhere like 0.35 to 0.6. But the more water that we add, the more suspended our particles are, the more voids we're going to have in our cement and in our concrete, which means the weaker it is going to be as a final product. So even though it becomes more workable and everybody likes being able to slosh it around with a lot of water, when the concrete finally cures, it is not going to be as hard as if we used less water. And it's important to have that term cure and not dry. It's not that it takes longer for it to dry. This concrete will cure under water. It's just that the water itself is making a bunch of pores in between, making a porous material instead of a very dense material. The density goes down and the strength goes down. Which leads me to my last point. Concrete is a great material in compression. Remember the Pantheon that I mentioned at the beginning of the video? That whole structure is in compression. It's a dome structure that everything is pushing down on and we can use it for a replacement of stone or any other material that's taking compression forces but as soon as we start pulling on it concrete falls apart literally it has very little tensile strength 3000 psi in compression no problem it'll give you about 300 psi in tension not very good at all so what do we do about it we add steel and make reinforced concrete but that is a topic for another video thanks so much for watching i hope you found this helpful if you run across Kristen Kelly you can let her know that literally tens of people found this topic enthralling if you have any questions post them in the comments below um, any other tips or tricks that you want to talk about with concrete I'd love to hear them below go check us out at the other social media wastes of time and we'll see you next time on Smith House